Guten Tag, meine Damen und Herren, ich darf Sie ganz herzlich begrüßen bei GMD auf der Industriemesse in Hannover 2021. Okay, in Hannover stimmt vielleicht nicht ganz. Ähm, die meisten von Ihnen, so wie ich, werden aus dem Homeoffice teilnehmen, aber nichtsdestotrotz lassen Sie uns eine gute Zeit haben. Ja, ich werde diese Präsentation mit meinen Kollegen zusammen auf Englisch fortführen. Ich hoffe viel Verständnis, da wir doch ein wir haben sehr internationales Publikum ansprechen, es ist einfacher so, damit Sie alle verstehen. Gut, dann fangen wir mal an. Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our 25 minute slot here at the Industry Fair in Hannover. My name is Ulrich Brohl. I'm a business development manager for cybersecurity in the area of Munich. And I'm not alone here, I'm just going to briefly introduce my colleagues. Um, João, Claudio and Marek all experts in their field. If you have any question, if you have doubts, anything which comes up, please do not hesitate to contact us. Here you can see the, our contact details. Who's Jim V? Um, well, some of you might know the company, others not. Um, just gonna briefly introduce the company to you. So Jim V is a privately owned Spanish technological group founded in 90. 84, so meaning a bit more than 35 years old. Our roots come from uh, the space industry, where we're still quite successful. The company employs over 2,300 people worldwide and has offices in Europe, United States, as well as in Malaysia. We serve all kinds of customers, from small to mid-sized companies to huge enterprises. And our mission, what is our mission? Well, we want to improve our customers' internal processes, services, and products. In doing so, we use, but also develop new technologies. It is our aim to meet customers' specific needs, and therefore, we come up with customized solutions. Well, and these solutions, as well as services, cover the whole system life cycle. In what sectors are we in? Well, as you can see here on the slide, quite many. Space, finance, health, cybersecurity, ICT, but of course, as well, the industry sector. And in the industry sector, our main task involves the development of advanced solutions in automation, digitalization, and cybersecurity. Partners. Well, we have a huge range of uh, partners, very reliable partnerships with companies such as Cisco, NetApp, Hewlett Packard, Checkpoint, and Psychotic, but many more. And to our clients? Well, our clients, they come from many different sectors, such as finance, industry, automotive, and so on. Please, please have a look at the slide. Good. Why are we here for? Well, Industry 4.0. Let's start with that. Good. What do we know? Well, the factory of the future will be almost completely automated and also robotized. Highly efficient manufacturing plants will be created in which production stages and logistic systems permanently exchange, organize, reorganize and optimize themselves. And this as far as possible without human influence. Companies that do not follow that path run the risk of losing competitive strength 
and are possibly no longer relevant to the market. Let's have a look at the slide. Well, how to build a data-driven business. Actually, how we can help you building a data-driven business. As you can see, it all keeps adding up. On the left-hand side, you see the first two steps towards digitalization. Introduction of IT on the shop floor with a goal to facilitate um, repetitive manual tasks, as well as connection integration of business processes with the goal to streamline business and IT. Let's take, let's take it one step further. Third step, build a digital twin with a goal to be able to make data-based decisions. Followed by, well, running your data analytics because the goal is to understand complex interactions within your system. Then the next step is simulation of future scenarios. So you can prepare yourself for upcoming situations. And last but not least, let the system adapt itself. Goal here is to leave control to the system. And that is how your path should look like. And of course, all around there must be protection, cybersecurity, to ensure that everything is safe. Let's have a closer look. Claudio, please take it from here. Hello everyone, Claudio here. Today I want to talk you through two things, data collection and how this can be integrated with industrial IoT sensors. So bringing us to the topic, when we talk about the industry 5.0, at the end of the day, we're talking about industrial data, which is pretty much the lifeblood of the digital factory. Um, some others like to refer to it as the new oil and as such, this should be treated and valued as any other business asset. So when we talk about the industry 5.0, data collection is actually the key to unlocking the industry 4.0. GMV, when it comes to data acquisition, we have been helping companies in two fronts. One, with industrial IoT sensors. So this normally takes place when you have acquired uh, machinery which doesn't provide um, data. So what we do in these instances is we implement IoT sensors on the shop floor and two, control engineering. So let's say that you are already able to collect that data from the shop floor and you don't have any services which allow you to collect and treat the data from those machines. So we can actually help you in the design and implementation of high performance control systems optimized to the need of our customers. So what I also bought for you is a use case which illustrates how IoT sensors can be applied to your data collection and subsequently to your production process. Um, so we developed a tool called Uspot, which is pretty much an artificial vision tool, which combines hardware, in this case, the sensors and um, the software. Um, the hardware can be adjusted to a specific need that you might have. So let's take into account um, a task which a person um, has to do it repetitively. So for instance, counting bottles with their own eyes. So with this solution, Uspot, we can actually, through artificial vision, count all the bottles, for instance, passing through a conveyor. So we can also send this data to a central system, which we can integrate directly with your production process. Hello, my name is Rob, and I'm bringing you the next couple of topics of our presentation starting with data analytics and business intelligence. On data analytics, we typically are referring to and looking into reports and dashboards. This 
gives us data in hindsight, what has happened in the past. Here, we can help you get some insight into your data by storing everything that we collect in an unstructured manner, in a premise that we store first and analyze it later. This will allow you to perform some investigation on what has happened and allow you to get the root causes of some events. On this, we can do some scenario-based forecasting. The basis is if something on these conditions has happened in the past, the future, if the same conditions repeat, the situation will repeat. In order to get some foresight into our data, we need to start building AI platforms and to do some predictive modeling. On business intelligence, this will allow us to leverage insights on our system and ensure that you are applying the right processes and the right corrections. One of the points is analysis and optimization of processes, where we can start with non-intrusive process mining techniques and then applying machine learning algorithms to understand where inefficiencies lie and where it can be improved. One other point is the user to use this data for predictive maintenance. Based on multivariate analysis, we can infer and predict the factory and equipment behavior based on the variation of certain control parameters. Or we can create one only one parameter that is an aggregate of um, a very high number of control parameters and allow you to understand if that is within normal operation or not. And if not, which parameters caused this deviation? One other topic that we can talk is hyperautomation. What is hyperautomation? Hyperautomation is using robotic automation software to automate manual time-consuming processes and aiding it with artificial intelligence. For example, when computer vision. Uh, we can use optical character recognition to read. One example is uh, an order form that you receive and automatically fill in all the data in your own system. This is something that is time consuming, repetitive and boring for our employees. When we are looking into hyperautomation, hyper we can look into it attended and unattended processes. An attended process, which started by a user, it's very simple, very task-based, but the great benefits start to arise when we start doing unattended processes, as we put the system in charge of the process from start to finish. As we are looking into an attended process, we can now also leverage more of our artificial intelligence. For example, using natural language processing, when you receive an email, it can create a summary of that email or it can extract the important information from that email and again, fill it in automatically on your system or react accordingly. Um, what are the benefits of hyperautomation? Well, first is cost reduction. Uh, you are automating processes and you are also increasing, increasing productivity as you create your virtual employees that do the same tasks it, they, they tend to run cheaper than a normal person also eliminating boring and repetitive tasks for your employees this has a direct effect on employee satisfaction also giving you increased accuracy and quality of your data as the system the software will not get bored, will not get distracted, and will do the same thing the same way every time. Also, finally, it can free up your limited and valuable resources, taking the people out of boring, the boring tasks that bring no value to your business. And with this, I am now passing on to Claudio for uh, factory floor automation. So my colleague has been talking you through hyper automation, which is pretty much related to digital robots. So let's talk now about shop floor automation with physical robots and AVGs. So since 1993, to give you a little bit of background, 
GMV has been developing and integrating turnkey systems and robotic subsystems applied to different sectors, such as the industry. So very much what we do is we optimize and optimize various types of processes through industrial collaborative and autonomous robotics. Some of our core services include systems engineering and integration, designing, implementation and integration of robotic solutions ranging from sensors, control and robotic arms, and so on. Now, one of the things which is important to note is when we talk about robotics, GMV is not actually a manufacturer. However, as a system integrated, GMV has access to a prestigious networks of technology partners who are responsible for manufacturing those robots. So as you can see here on these slides, we have some examples of providers that we have been collaborating for a number of years. So as a system integrator, one of the advantages that come along with us is our ability to do advanced integrations. And what does this mean? Um, so let's say that you already have your existing robots working in your shop floor. However, you would like to add additional layers of services to increase your performance. So we can actually provide you a range of services around big data, cloud, IoT, as you can see here, um, in order to increase your production. I also wanted to share with you a quick example of an autonomous robot that we have developed that had to be placed in an oil and gas platform. So the purpose of the robot was um, to read and detect um, pressure indicators, detect gas leaks. So as you can see, the robot had to be working under extreme working conditions. So the robot had to be able to climbing stairs, navigating through the installation corridors and being able to detect and overcome obstacles. Um, just a quick example that I wanted to share with you. Um, now I'm passing the word to my colleague Merrick, who will guide you through cybersecurity in the industry 5.0 context. Thank you, Claudio. Uh, this is some interesting subject you were talking about. Uh, let me take it from there and uh, change it a bit. Uh, my name is Marek Patuszak and I deal with cybersecurity here in GMV. Um, our range of uh, security services covers the entire life cycle of cybersecurity. We have a large pool of experts with over 80% of us being engineers, myself included. And right from the start, we work close with our customers in order to best protect them from cyber attacks by developing customized solutions. Uh, we focus on long-term, continuous growth, growth of the relationship. Uh, you can see some examples of the services we can offer uh, on the current slide. And yes, we are certified in uh, several uh, areas that assure application of highest uh, standards in all our, all, all our projects and services. Our, our approach is depicted by this concentric multi-layered circle, circle with four major domains. Independently of your current cybersecurity standpoint, we can support you whenever you are. And the uh, first important element laying at the core of the framework is the security governance. It includes the creation of security rules and plans, policies, procedures, vulnerability analysis, risk and GDPR assessment, so on and so forth. And uh, once uh, the governance is in place, uh, we can also and we will support you in the creation and operation of your security architecture. Uh, within this, this domain, we can design, implement, operate, evolve and maintain all kinds of security solutions for you. Now, independently of how sophisticated your security architecture is and how detailed is your governance, without human eyes watching, uh, some events can end up slipping under the radar. I believe that nobody should ask, uh, what if I'm going to be attacked? Uh, the bad news that uh, that the question is when, if not already already. And to tackle that, we offer blue team services. Uh, we have our own security operation center to respond to cyber attacks and monitor the events 24-7 basis. In addition, uh, in GMV, we are able to play the role of the, of the attacker, red teaming. Um, 
with the aim of uncovering vulnerabilities before potential attackers or real life attackers do so. Uh, from all the different functions that Red Team has listed there, I think it's the adversary simulation that is the most useful. And your company probably has multiple procedures, playbooks, incident response program, intrusion alerts, or, and more. Nevertheless, it is not until the real life incident happens when one gets to see all of them activated at the same time. Uh, so while everything looks good, great on paper, uh, we can actually learn about multiple weaknesses or single points of failure in our security program. So why not test it and uh, learn all the lessons in a controlled way? And uh, now allow me to quickly take you through the cybersecurity applied to operation technology. Uh, at its core, it is similar to, to, to IT with the services and products uh, I mentioned before directly applicable. However, there are some particularities, many of them, that make it quite different. Uh, for example, high dependence on physical sensors. Uh, it is not my intention here to take you through any specific solution or product. Uh, what I want to mention is the way we approach security in, in the industry. In simple terms, uh, we take uh, advantage of our long experience in IT security projects and adapt it to, to the OT security. Uh, we work and continue working for large organizations and critical infrastructures. And uh, OT has certain particularities that we have identified. From my experience, one of them is the presence of large number of legacy systems. Um, it is a common issue in many industries that depend on complex systems. Uh, some of them are running for decades unchanged uh, without a clear way to, to do so. Uh, space industry suffers from the same issue, by the way, um, flying missions for 20 years. And uh, it is not a trivial task to upgrade or update them, the, those systems, to, to the hardware and software versions that are free of commonly known vulnerabilities. Yet we, we do know how. And another problem is that those devices and systems often operate in closed environments. This makes installation of security patches very complex, and sometimes even next to impossible. And I think that the biggest challenge uh, we all have to face uh, within the industry is that uh, security in those systems must be implemented without disrupting operations. Again, we've came up with a solution. OT has, has as well its own set of risks uh, with broad adoption of Internet of Things uh, and cloud uh, solutions like infrastructure as a service. Those risks are becoming even, um, even more threatening. Distributed denial of service is a good example. And uh, to finalize, I leave you with this uh, last slide. It provides a high level overview of the services we can offer and make sure you get in touch. Uh, back to you, Uli. Yeah, thanks, uh, Marek. That was very nice. Um, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that was it from our side. I hope you had a good time. You enjoyed the last couple of minutes. Um, yeah, feel free to contact us. Once more, we put in that uh, slide our contact details. So if you get further questions whatsoever, please don't be shy. We're here for you. Okay, have a great time, a successful fair, and stay healthy. All the best. Ja, meine Damen und Herren, nochmal ganz herzliches Dankeschön, dass Sie zu uns auf dem virtuellen Stand gekommen sind. Ähm, falls irgendwelche Fragen oder Sonstiges ähm, offen sein sollte, bitte melden Sie sich bei uns. Wir freuen uns auf jeden Fall sehr. Alles Gute, machen Sie es gut und bleiben Sie gesund. Bis dahin. Tschüss.